All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Andrew Fiebert, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm good. How are you, John? Excellent, excellent. Andrew is a successful entrepreneur, podcast host, and affiliate marketer with over 10 years of experience building niche uh, sites. Uh, you lately built uh, Lasso to help other niche, niche or niche, whichever way you want to do, site Both owners ways. make more, more affiliate income from their existing content. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is optimizing your web content to earn more with less. So um, th let's get straight into it, Andrew. Um, your web content has, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of opinions around it. There's algorithms from Google that keep changing and all of that. Uh, so you have to adapt to it. So how how can number one somebody look at what they're doing today and say, okay, this this needs optimization. This isn't working. So there's <clears throat> two pieces. There's the um, part where uh, related to revenue and then, you mm -hmm. know, related to actually getting traffic. Um, I do SEO work. I own my own content businesses as well as Lasso. Um, and so on that end, if, if you're not ranking, it's likely you're not good enough. Um, backlinks are a piece of it, but as it goes to revenue, um, I think that you should think about in terms of earnings per thousand visits. Uh, and so that's typically what display ads are categorized as. Um, I do a lot of affiliate marketing work. That's what Lasso focuses on. Um, and so uh, <clears throat> ads is like level one. You know, level two is selling your, uh, you know, other people's products through affiliate marketing, and level three being your own products. And and level two and level three are many fold more uh, lucrative than just display ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so if somebody is, if somebody is looking at where they should focus today, like, I mean, where they should place their bets, where, where do you think that is in terms of revenue? Yeah. So, um, I would look at the intent of the articles that you have. So if say you have something, uh, fun things to do on Friday night, um, you're not likely to make much money off that at all. There is not much buying intent with that. Uh, it's kind mm -hmm. of just like an idea generation thing. If you had an article, how to write a check, um, it's probably just going to be a picture of a check. This is the routing number. This is the account. Not much money to make there. You're not even going to sell checks, honestly. Um, however, if there is buying intent, like say uh, this product versus that product, what is the best laundry basket, um, gifts for 13-year-olds that whatever love dolphins mm -hmm. like there's so much more intent there and so i would one limit it to those that you look to improve so a small subset um and i would i would try and identify the the products that this person would want so if it's a a versus b like two product comparison create a financial relationship with both those companies through their affiliate program and just mm -hmm. monetize those links it, it, it really is that simple yeah, and um, and as you said, I mean, what's what's nice about that is that that is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, um but I noticed that uh, you know, uh, niche or niche, whichever way you want to pronounce it, um, being very targeted is obviously better, right? You know, finding that niche and really going after it. Yeah. So um, I don't want to necessarily wax poetic about uh, SEO, but uh, people seem to be intoxicated with volume. And volume mm -hmm. tends to actually be rather bad where uh, big head terms, like say, if I wanted to rank for affiliate marketing, uh, that traffic probably is better suited for Wikipedia than my site. And no one is really ready to buy then, but the long tail, super specific things often that uh, enumerate a problem that a specific product can solve have very small volume, but a very high percentage of those people are buyers. And so I would look to very low volume, like long tail terms with incredible buying tent where you know that exact problem is being solved by this product, your product, whatever. There's also likely to be no competition to rank there. So I think mm -hmm. like less people, but maybe more sales per month on a hundred, like if a hundred people are visiting an article 
and 50% are going to buy versus 50,000 people and 0.1% are going to buy, the smaller article is better. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would agree with you. I mean, I think it's finding who your audience really is. And then from the point of view of the content itself, like what what makes for good content? Because let's face it, I mean, everybody and their uncle is a content creator today or thinks they are. So used to say in Ireland, if you threw a, threw a rock out a window, you'd hit a short story writer. I think nowadays, if you threw a rock out the window, you'd hit a podcaster or a blogger or somebody who create <laughs> content of some kind. So what makes for good content? Because there's an awful lot of noise out there. Um, something that chat GPT can't provide, which is insight based on experience, knowledge, uh, having physically owned a product, been to a place, done a thing. Um, if you are going to write uh, a review on a grill and you pull all of your images off of Google Images and you read the top 10 articles to write your article, you've added nothing new to the conversation mm -hmm. and your article doesn't really need to exist. And Google's become really good at identifying that and then essentially not letting your article exist in the search. And so go buy the grill, take your own pictures, add in your insight, what did you cook? Show a picture of the thing you cooked. And so I think, um, where you level up is in all of the crevasses of it. Like the main uh, storyline may be the same, but you know the details are what matters, and that's where like you as the expert um, can set yourself apart. Yeah, and I and I think that's a really important point that you made there because uh, as we know, there are tools coming out, there are AI tools coming out right now with uh, you know write your post for you all of this kind of thing, and which is only going to add to the noise, quite frankly. But the point that you made is the, is the really important one, is that it's, that you're, it's your expertise, your insights. AI is never going to be able to do that. Don't forget what people tell you. They're never going to be able to bring your experiences and the react, all, all of that to it. So um, it is really important that people look at the quality of their content and don't fall prey to easy shortcuts that really aren't going to help them in the long run. Yeah. And, you know, um, you like the, the anecdotes that you give being succinct in, in your answers, knowing as a person, what another person would want versus like a dictionary answer. That's your advantage. You know, that that's where you compete with the AI. And, and honestly, Google's doing everything they, they can to squash AI. So I don't think there's much to worry about. Yeah, and and that point that you made there, I mean, it's 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 those key experiences and all of that 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 really come into play, uh, and that's where you, and obviously where you can differentiate yourself. But you need to be authentic, like you just said. If I'm going to do, if I'm going to talk about a grill and you never see me use it, then I might, you know, the authenticity, the validation isn't really there. So you have to. So I think today people crave authenticity because there's so much that's. I hate to use the word fake because it's thrown around so much, but there's so much that perhaps isn't what isn't uh, all that it seems. And mm -hmm. therefore people are really craving uh, authenticity from other people. They're, you know, they want to know that there's real people behind it and they want to know that, you know, they're this, whatever product or service is actually going to, to help them. Yeah. And, and I think that uh, like, again, it's like to lean away from volume where people are becoming more skeptical as they learn that there's financial incentives to things and why mm -hmm. certain things are ranking or why people are saying to buy this thing. And so um, if you just have this like mass amount of people that are coming in to a disingenuous article, they're not going to convert. And I think your ultimate goal is to convert them to sales to your product or another and generate revenue. And so the, the money really is in being honest and providing like clear value. So it's it's a little bit harder, but honestly, it's like the last 10% of the work and it matters the most. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. And I think that that your, your comment about volume is absolutely 100% correct because it's far better if you focus, create good content and focus on, on a, a targeted group of people rather than, as we said, just throw out general stuff that's probably yeah, probably going to get uh, buried by buried by Google anyway. 
Um, so, what are some in in your in your in your experiences? What what are some great examples of of content that really works well that you've seen? You know, um, it's really easy to use Wirecutter as an example, and and before even they were bought by the New York Times because they went, they bought the products. You know, they gave you the answers at the top. Hey, this is the upgrade pick. This is, you know, our recommendation. This is the budget. But then they went into incredible detail on all the tests that they ran. If there's a chair, how many people sat in it? They got up, they got down, they kicked it down a flight of stairs, whatever they did. And so it was the answers, you know, easy to find for the people who don't care about the story and the why. But that is also included custom images. That stuff wins. Um and then also, uh, sometimes it doesn't need to be this whole long drawn out thing. Uh, one of the sites that I own, it's giftlab.co, and it's a bunch of gift lists. And people who come to our site, they just want the answer. They just want ideas. And so we just give them a list of ideas. And you know the taste level of the list and the quality of the items in terms of what they're looking for matters more than me having to put you know, 1,500 words on a page that no one wants to read. They just want to see the picture of the item and buy. Yeah, no, that's a that that's a great that's a great example. I, I love that because, uh, as you said, it's uh, it's not just uh, it's just just giving you the information, but it's putting it in context too, and it's it's allowing you to it's layered, right? So you you can get a little bit of information, or you can go deeper if you want. Uh, do you have any other examples like that? I mean, it really comes down to the intent. Um, and so if, for example, you are looking to go on vacation, um, one of the things that Airbnb did recently, I think it's really interesting is they started to super niche down how they categorize things like mm -hmm. houses with cool pools, like yeah. arch like really great architecture homes. And so if you were a blog creating in the travel space, I think you can take that as a signal that they know that people are looking for these things. And so you can start to segment your article categories or how you discuss things like that. Um, and so while there's not like one formula, what I think you should think about is the intent of the person who's visiting the page. What do they really want? And it's probably not a wall of text. And so that's like an outdated mindset. They just have to add words and that's you know what mm -hmm. will solve the problem. Yeah, and I love that. That that's a great example, actually, the Airbnb, because yeah, they and obviously they put a lot of money and research behind it, but because they're now going for experiences, and I think that's I, I think that's part of it is that people want to understand the uh, people want experiences and they want to understand the experience they're going to have if they purchase, uh, you know, a product or a service. Absolutely. Um, it, it's less, especially after COVID and all that, it's less about being showy than like, is this the thing that I want? Does the thing that I want that will last or whatever? And if it comes to a vacation, it's, it's, if you care about pictures on social media, then you will go for a home that is like that. But your search intent or the, the you know, how you kind of arrive to the page will, will give clues for that, you know? And so it's, um, where a lot of people early in the internet, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm losing traffic. I think what's happening is the keywords are going to more specific articles. And it's not just like one article wins the whole game. Google realized that intent is much more specific. And so um, creating those like long tail, hyper specific things tend to convert better. And it's what people really want. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, that sometimes we forget these things like we're all consumers and that's often how we want, you know, we want to get the information. We want to see if it works. We want to see some review, whatever it is. And we want to just, you know, be able to move as quickly as possible because we live in this short, shortcut culture and short term, um, easily distracted. Uh, but yet when we when we create experiences for our own customers, sometimes we forget all of that and we build something that's you know not so intuitive that that we wouldn't even like, but for some reason we do it. I mean that that always kind of baffles me. Yeah, like effort doesn't necessarily equate to success or better, you know? Um, like you said, brevity is is wins. I think there was like some 
quote where it was like, if you need me to write uh, a 16 hour presentation, I could, or, you know, give one, I could do it now. But if you need it to be 15 minutes, I need a week to prepare. Being right. short and kind of like nailing the point is difficult, which is why it's worthy of doing. It's what people want. Yeah, and that's a great point you made there too, because uh, I don't think people often understand is that getting something down to, boiling it down to the core essence and and you know the keeping it brief and to the point and all that is a quite a difficult undertaking uh, because let's face it, people always think, oh, and add this in, oh, and we, I need to add this, or oh, I must mention that as well, and that's the kind of thing that you have to resist. You have to really get down to what are the key salient things that I need to to communicate because I can't communicate everything. You know, um, Tesla, and you could think whatever about the company or, or the owner. Um, if you've been in one of the cars, I think it's fascinating because everything is removed. Like there's like literally nothing there. There's a big screen, the steering wheel that you need, the pedals, but for the most part, it's all been completely redesigned. Uh, and a lot of the BS that is unnecessary is as been removed like rpms most of us drive automatic cars so being dialed into the rpms is not important for us and we don't care there's a niche piece of car owners who are really into that stuff and so they can buy cars for that but by and large removing all of these things one makes the car cheaper for tesla to produce and two mm. makes the 80 percent of the people who are ideal buyers happy they don't want to have to find the button or the knob for the air conditioner. It should be really clear. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a that that that's a great point because uh, I remember a number of years ago when I was uh, bringing back some car. I think I was leasing and getting leasing another one uh, of the same, and the guy was going, the salesperson was going through some of the features, and then he just mentioned one there, and I said, "Oh, that's really cool." Um, I used that, and he goes, well, "It was in your other one too." I'm like, oh, was <laughs> yeah. And to your point, I mean, who who can read a, like a five thousand page manual and go through every single thing? I mean, we just don't Nobody. do that. To your to your point is, and I think that's a great point overall. Is that I think the more we move forward, the more people want clarity and they don't want to be overwhelmed. There's so much noise and everything that you know, keeping it as you said, like Tesla does, is is really. Kind of, we're going more towards a. I think there's a, a movement towards minimalism. You know, uh, our attention is pulled in a million directions. When when I grew up, and, and there's not many people like this left. I'm sure it's the same for you. There wasn't an internet. There weren't cell phones. You go and mm -hmm. you ride your bike. You're completely present. But now everything is pulling our time, and so we just have less time for all the things. But you greatly respect the things that save you time or don't overly consume it. And so um, I think if you could just be that for your people, um, I think they'll appreciate it. Yeah. And just uh, and just let people know as we're as we're coming to the end of this, like affiliate marketing. I mean, sometimes people think I oh, say, oh, yeah, well, you know, you can't really make money off of that. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about how how lucrative it can be. Yeah. So uh, last year, my site Gift Lab sold uh, a little over $12 million in merchandise just on Amazon. Uh, if you go to the site giftlab.co, it's, it's a bunch of simple gift lists. You're like, a five-year-old can make this. And I, and I guess you'd be right, but you know, kind of the complicated thing is doing that scale. Um, there's a lot of revenue to be had for selling your own product or other people's products. And uh, as you know, owning a business, the hardest part is getting customers in the door. And that's what mm -hmm. affiliate marketing does. And so while everyone thinks like Google ads is the it or whatever, and, and a lot of money goes through there, the business owner takes all the risk. Whereas with affiliate marketing, the business owner takes no risk because the content creators takes the risk in the sense that they think they can sell this and they only get paid if there's a sale. Um, and I think if you talk to most businesses, it, it really comes close to word of mouth, where it's like, how do you, um, you know, militarize the, the the audience of people who want your product or know other people like that? Like, uh, if you can make money recommending Netflix, that's easy. You already like Netflix. You already own it, and that's what affiliate marketing is. And so, um, if you know something really well, and you can provide insights that are perhaps not clear out there. there. There's quite a lot of money to be made. I have made millions with it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this, I, I, I thank you for your insights. I mean, this has been fantastic. Uh, so, um, all of, uh, all of Andrew's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. Once upon a time, I was a dad engineer. Now, uh, I, I know I've built a bunch of content sites that, uh, have earned quite a bit and now uh, I'm working on lasso and our mission is to help other content creators earn an honest living online. And so if you want to make money with affiliate marketing, uh, we are the thing that you really, really need and wish existed. Um, we will be your monetization team. Perfect. Well, go check it out. Uh, uh, as I said, all the links will be below. Go check it out. Maybe it's for you. Uh, and uh, and obviously, Lasso makes it all very easy for you. So uh, go check it out and see uh, and see if you can generate some income for yourself in 2023 using affiliate marketing. So listen, thanks again, Andrew. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah.